بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مائی ٹاپک فار ٹوڈیز لیکچر از اسٹوماس اسٹوماز الیاسٹمی اسٹوما کولاسٹمی الیاسٹمی از اے پلانڈ اوپننگ میڈ ان دی کولن آر اسمال انٹسٹائن ٹو ڈائیورٹ فیسز اینڈ فلیٹس ٹو دی ڈومینل وا ویئر دے کین بی کلیکٹڈ ان این ایکسٹرنل اپلائنس سو this is our topic today and this is what the definition of stomas at the end of this lecture all the students must be able to define stoma then they should be able to classify or should know the types of the stomas how what are the indications of the stomas and how to manage these stomas So, if we talk about different classification, intestinal stomas, intestinal stomas, they can be classified into ileostomy or colostomy. Intestinal stoma, another way to is either these stomas can be end or loop, that means It can be an end ileostomy or end colostomy or loop ileostomy or loop colostomy. There's another way to group these uh, stomas, for example, these intestinal stomas may be temporary or sometimes they are permanent. principle of stoma formation so we have to discuss the possibility of a stoma with patients undergoing elective or emergency colorectal surgery so what is important that discuss about stoma with the patient who is going to have this uh, procedure on them assessment for stoma there is another principle of stoma formation and this is usually done by maybe done by stoma therapist stoma therapist and more different hospitals they are available and what is important in this part of the uh, discussion that all the patient they are assessed before we form especially in elective Uh, elective surgery we discuss with the patient we we try probably what is sitting of the stoma we select the site where we have to form the stoma so mar it should be patient is assessed preoperatively while he is lying down in a sitting position in a standing position then we mark this best site for a stoma an area should be easy to see and access while selecting these sites always avoid bony prominence for example iliac crest rib cage because then it becomes difficult to apply the appliances stoma appliances and then we should avoid the area of scars skin creases and then anticipated surgical wounds and belt line so it should not be at the site of the belt line because we have to the belt will overlie the uh, this uh, appliance stoma creation another uh, when we discussing the principle of stoma formation another important aspect is how to create stoma stoma creation create an opening about the width of a two finger breadth this is a rough estimate while we making an opening in the interior abdominal wall that the part of gut which is passing through that hole it should be minimum about two finger breadth deliver well vascularized tension free segment of the bowel through the rectus abdominis another important thing the which part of the gut small intestine or large intestine is brought out that should be well vascularized 
and while bringing outside that opening it should be tension free otherwise what will happen it will become ischemic and will become gangrenous before opening close any other wounds for example when we open the gut in stoma formation we before that we close the wound of the laparotomy or any other wound which are we have made on the abdominal wall then we open the bowel and secure to skin with evenly placed absorbable suture so we open the gut then we apply a serum a full thickness interrupted suture with absorbable suture to the skin around the opening in the uh, uh, abdominal wall when we make ileostomy must know something that ileostomy affluent what whatever nick or comes out of the ileostomy it is liquid it is frequently at alkaline ph it contains activated digestive enzymes discharged almost continuously so, so the ileo when we make ileostomy what is important then we should know what what is coming out of it and it is always discharges almost continuously from the ileostomy and this effluent also excoriates the and digest the skin that causes the rash around the ileostomy and this is important we should we should know before making this so that we can construct uh, ileostomy in a way that these complications should not occur so to avoid how we can avoid this excoriation and digestion the skin that is in the form that we elevate the ileostomy opening about 3 to to 3 cm from the skin to ensure the effluent passes so that the effluent passes directly into a stoma bag with minimal contact with the skin we can see we can see how this is this is the skin and the ileostomy is this uh, elevated above the skin about 2 to 3 cm you can see that this is this is how it is elevated above the skin then ileostomy ileum is inverted on itself this you can see in this photograph in this diagram that the ileostomy is inverted the inside is inverted outside and this is here the skin stitches they are applied to the end of the so this is the ileum is inverted on itself to form a spout this is spout of the ileostomy and this is very important because this is going to help to avoid excoriation of the skin colostomy on the other hand when we talk about the colostomy colostomy effluent the uh, the effluent and the contents of the colostomy which is coming from the colostomy is used in form stools they discharge intermittently it's not continuous outflow of the stool from the colostomy because of the movement of the large intestine usually the discharge is intermittent it's not continuous not directly corrosive to the skin the stool which is coming out from the colostomy it is not it does not cause corrosion of the skin it does not digest the skin so the problem of rash around the colostomy is minimal it usually falls directly into a so the the these the stools they fall directly into the stoma bag and the problem which occur with the uh, ileostomy they don't occur with uh, stoma formation and we don't need any uh, spout in the case of uh, colostomy formation it can be flushed with the surface because stool form stool they will come out of this stoma for uh, the colostomy colostomies are sutured flush with skin uh, this is the thing which i was explaining in the previous slide so the colostomies as in the case of ileostomy you have seen in the case of colostomy you can see it's not elevated above the skin it is at the level of the skin because the contents they are feces so 
they allowed to spout slightly to prevent retraction after weight gain. So that means only slight elevation is required in colostomy as compared to ileostomy. So that if the patient gains weight afterwards, it does not retract. Then another way to we have grouped the, coloss, uh, the uh, stoma into temporary stoma or a uh, permanent stoma. So another way we can group them is temporary loop colostomy. Temporary loop, temporary colostomy is usually loop colostomy. That means we bring out a loop of the intestine, whether it's a small intestine or it's a large intestine. Temporary loop colostomy do diff the idea is to defunction anastomosis after an anterior resection. The number of indications of temporary transverse loop colostomy. For this one example, in this we can see the anterior resection, which is an erect, uh, colorectal anastomosis lower down. So we can we can uh, make a loop colostomy which is temporary, and this is going to save the uh, distal anastomosis. Loop left iliac fossa colostomy. And that was the previous one, the transverse colostomy. And another site where we can construct a loop colostomy is in the left iliac fossa, and this is sigmoid uh, loop colostomy. The indication to prevent fecal peritonitis following traumatic injury to the rectum to facilitate the operative treatment of a high fistula in ano and in incontinence. There are cases where incontinence occurs and those cases uh, we can do a loop, uh, for example, a traumatic laceration at the level of the anus, anal verge, anal sphincter damage. We can do a loop left leg cosa colostomy. So these are the indication of temporary loop colostomy. A temporary loop colostomy is made bringing a loop of colon to the surface where it is held in place by a plastic bridge passed through the mesente. And that I will explain how it is, that is done. Once the abdomen has been closed, the colostomy is then colostomy. That means the wound of laparotomy is closed first and then the colon is opened and the edges of the colonic in CN are sutured to the adjacent skin margins. When firm adhesion of the colostomy to the abdominal wall has taken place, that, that means we uh, the fibrinous adhesions, then those fibrinous adhesions, they are formed into fibrous adhesion. So, when those are formed, then the bridge can be removed after about seven days. The bridge we, which we placed in, in, through the mesentery underneath the loop so that it is not detected inside. So this is one way of securing the colostomy. This, this point, distal lupogram, this is basically when for a temporary loop colostomy, when we close this loop colostomy, the advantage of this temporary loop colostomy is that we can operate on this patient and revert this colostomy to make it continuous. But before that, we have to do a distal lupogram. This is a contrast study. The distal part of the ball is visualized to check for distal obstruction and are containing problem at the site of previous surgeries. So this is very important. A contrast study should be done for the distal part before closing any temporary colostomy. Usually the timing of this colostomy lower is about uh, about two months afterwards so that the tissues they become uh, they become mature. So these are the different areas which we where the colostomy is formed. This is ascending colostomy, this is transverse colostomy, the place for transverse colostomy, descending or sigmoid. This is the area of sigmoid. Ascending colon and descending colon colostomy are difficult because these are retroperitoneal. We have to mobilize a lot before bringing them outside with intact blood supply.
transverse colon and sigmoid colon they have the advantage because they have a long a lot mobility due to their mesentery so these areas they are easy to bring out with their blood supply here you can see this is this is the bridge which we have used a plastic rod beneath the loop through the mesentery here you can see that this is this is a area of transverse loop colostomy in this case double barrel colostomy double barrel usually a double, you must uh, imagine a double barrel gun here you can see it is rarely used now it, the pre one indication of double barrel colostomy was uh, when uh, is a large gut in a valvulus sigmoid valvulus or uh, in that case uh, this double barrel colostomy was used to be done so colon is divided so that the both ends can be brought to the surface separately ensuring that the distal segment is completely defunctioned this point is very important in a loop colostomy it's not 100% diverse sometimes what happens because the posterior wall of the gut is intact so what happens when there is a peristalsis from the proximal to the distal segment through the posterior wall which is intact is is uh, propagated so what happens there is a synchronized movement and whatever is coming from the proximal end sometimes is sucked into the distal end so loop colostomy if must keep in mind it's not 100% diversion so for 100% diversion what is important that the and they are brought separately to the surface so they cause complete defunctioning here you can see here you can see this is double barrel one end is here and through the same opening you can see that it's a double barrel colostomy permanent colostomy sometimes we have to do a permanent colostomy that means we are not going to revert it it is end colostomy form what is the indication for example in abdominal planar resection what we do we move the sphincter in the sphincter even so in those cases in carcinoma rectum lower carcinoma rectum carcinoma of the anal canal formed after exceeding of the rectum for a carcinoma by the abdominal planar resection this is one indication of permanent colostomy here you can see that distal part Nil canal rectum, a part of the sigmoid that is removed in one specimen in abdominal planar resection, and the proximal end is brought out as end colostomy and permanent colostomy. Here you can see the permanent colostomy has been created. Temporary end colostomy. Sometimes there is we have to make an end colostomy, but it's temporary. in relation to that we can uh, have one we can explain one procedure which is hartman procedure you must remember this hartman procedure sometimes we have to do this is sometimes done and when there is a gangrenous uh, uh, sigmoid colon valvulus or in cases of emergency the patient they come with the carcinoma rectum with obstruction so in this patient what is hartman procedure basically that we <coughs> resect a segment of the colon sigmoid colon or rectum in that in this hartman procedure we cannot bring, cannot bring the distal end of the rectum outside on the surface as mucus fistula so we close it and put it inside this is the distal end which is closed and it is inside in the proximal end is brought out as end colostomy but it is temporary because we can restore the continuity later on but remember hartman procedure is very difficult to to restore it's a very difficult because we have to do laparotomy to restore hartman procedure it's a difficult procedure we people usually avoid hartman procedure because a lot of effort for restoration is required afterwards and this is must always done through laparotomy
I lost me. It is an artificial opening made as we explained previously between the eye limb and the skin of the abdominal wall to divert intestinal contents to the exterior without a sphincter to control the timing of its emptying. Affluent is usually liquid as I explained it previously. The Brooks asked me, we, when we construct uh, ileostomy, we say a spout is made Brooks spout, Brooks ileostomy. Basically, it was adopted because, as I explained pre in the previous slide, it's a, it's a, ileostomy is difficult to manage, especially because there are a lot of complications, a lot of excoriation that occurs due to the affluent of the ileostomy on the skin. The surrounding skin is excoriated, it is rashed, and patients have a lot of complaint. So, uh, in case of ileostomy, we do a Brooks ileostomy, and it was adapted worldwide after it was introduced in 1952. Brian Brooks, and this basically revolutionized the stoma surgery. Brooks ileostomy, you must remember this name. The spout we, which we made for ileostomy, which is raised about 2 to centi 3 centimeter above the uh, skin on the abdominal wall, the, we call it Brooks ileostomy. And this is a very, uh, the, uh, problems which occur with the ileostomy, they are lessened with when we constructed Brooks uh, uh, ileostomy spout. Sometimes we have to do an end ileostomy. The ileum, the end is brought out a, a distal ileum as an end. So this is called permanent end ileostomy. In cases where total proctocolectomy is done, for example, in ulcerative colitis, these are the indication: Crohn's disease, familial polyposis, coli. These cases we have to do sometimes colorectal, dist, uh, colorectal uh, CN, total proctocolectomy this is procedure is called. So in those cases we have to bring ileum as uh, ileostomy which is permanent and end ileostomy. Sometimes we can do a temporary end ileostomy. For example after subtotal colectomy with end ileostomy in fulminant or perforated ulcerative colitis. If we have saved the rectum so that later on we can do a ileorectal anastomosis. Similarly, after a segmental resection of the small bowel where primary anastomosis is unsafe, sometimes is done. even in typhoid perforation in Crohn's disease, in ischemic gut, we have to do an end ileostomy in these cases. And the distal end sometimes we bring out as a, 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 a mucous fistula. This is this we, here you can see this is this is permanent end ileostomy. The end of the ileum has been uh, brought out as ileostomy. You can see the spout of the ileostomy. It is raised from the skin. It's a temporary end ileostomy. And in this case, you can see this is, this is another opening on the in the left leg fossa. This is basically mucous fistula. So we bring it outside because. When later on we have to revert it, we can easily identify the distal end, which is difficult in cases of Hartman procedure where the distal end is inside the tummy and the peritoneum, where it becomes difficult to sometimes identify it. Sikosni is rarely done. Bad means the opening in the cecum which is brought on the surface is rarely done, used nowadays. Indication of sicostomy in desperately ill patients with advanced obstruction, closed loop obstruction. This is one indication. Following on table lavage via the appendix term, the irrigating catheter can be left in place as a tube sicostomy. We do a pandesectomy for peri we are talking about the peritoneal lavage. Uh, uh, the on table lavage of the colon when we do which we do on the table to clean the the large cut so 
follies is passed through the opening where we have done the appendicectomy and through this uh, follies catheter or a tube inside through the appendicular stump at the base of the cecum and we can wash the whole gut. So, so cecosmy, a tube, this is called tube cecosmy and then it is left there for some time and can be removed later on. Short term measure to allow, the cecosmy is basically a short term measure to allow a few days for the condition of patient to improve. Reoperation later on for definitive procedure is done in these patients. Stoma appliances. Here you can see different stoma appliances. Protective skin barriers. And this this is one form of way this is applied. It is sometimes also called wafer. So protects the skin barrier. Around this is the part where through which uh, opening a colostomy or ileostomy comes out and there is a surrounding which is attached to the skin which is basically protects the skin from the affluence. So pouches, they are closed end pouches, drainable pouches. This is closed end. In these cases we have to remove it. Here you can see this is, this is where we can empty the pouch. So this is the part where which is, which is attached to the skin. It's a wafer type part of the stoma bag pouch. So it's a drainable. Here we can empty the pouch. Uh, and here we apply a clip which can be removed then the bag can be emptied and again a clip is applied. So stoma appli appliances they are available, they are very good appliances and sometimes they they are even smell, they protect from the smell in uh, these appliances. Nowadays very good appliances they are available. Another aspect of stoma is different complications of stoma. So complication which can occur with uh, stoma, one is ischemia. As I told you, then when we bring the ileum or the colon outside as ileostomy or colostomy, it should be tension free. It should bring its, it should be well vascularized. So ischemia is one complication. The stoma becomes gangrenous. Is ischemic. Another complex is retraction. It's not properly mobilized. There is tension on the stoma. Then it will retract. Retraction of stoma. Another complication. Prolapse of the stoma. I will show some uh, photographs where you can see these complications. Prolapse. The, the mucosa inside there it can become so stoma prolapse is another complication which can occur with stoma formation, necrosis of the distal end. So stoma can necrose, fistula formation, stenosis of the orifice in the skin. Another complication, very important complication of stoma is parastomal hernia. So hernia, hernial sac that is formed in this opening of the skin opening but it is that sac forms around the part of the gut which comes out as stoma. So parastomal hernia is another complication of, of stoma formation. Stomas they can bleed. Lot of bleeding can occur from the stoma due to erosions and uh, so bleeding is another complication. Colostomy diarrhea is one complication of stoma. We, we label when there is a diarrhea in this patient, especially colostomy. So we say that patient is having colostomy diarrhea, dermatitis, chin changes which occur around stoma. So dermatitis and psychological complication, psychological patient who is having the stoma, obviously we have to reassure these patients because they are psychologically disturbed. They, they, they avoid to go outside, they avoid the different areas. Complication of stoma. Here you can see the, the ischemia of the gut. This is retracted end 
of the colostomy. Here you can see stenosis of the end colostomy. This is complication, other complication on the photographs. The prolapsed end colostomy, parastomal hernia. Here, this is the where you can see the swelling. This is parastomal hernia. Fecal irritant dermatitis. As you can see dermatitis all around. This is fecal dermatitis. This is another, as I told you, these are the complications. So, thank you for this. So, take home message is that what is the colostomy or ileostomy is basically opening and artificial opening made in the ileum and our colon which is brought on the surface. And I told you, you must know the indications, you must know how this is formed and what are different complications. Then if you have some question, you can ask on, online. Thank you.